on this physics lesson. 4.1, forces as a vector. All right, so welcome to Honors Physics Lesson 4.1. Uh, let's see what we have going on today. So, forces as a vector. So, picture this awesome lawnmower here, which uh, happens to be a Troy Built, which is the best lawnmower ever, because Troy built it. Dun, dun, dun. All right, anyways, jokes aren't really that much better in class either. So, if we take this and we, I don't know, turn it into this sweet looking box here. Get that, there you go. And here's our handle there. And we get rid of this whole thing. Let's see. Goodbye. All right. So we're left with the startings of a free body diagram. So our box here is having a force going out of it. All right. Now that force is making an angle of 50 degrees below the horizontal. So if you can picture the horizontal over here, this angle right there is 50 degrees. All right, um, we are applying a force of 90 newtons, and some of that force is being applied downwards, do, 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 right, in a negative direction, and we call that y. And some of this force, do, 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 do is being applied over, and that's positive. And that is our x component of our diagram. So we know overall that the mass is, is 40, so the force of gravity should equal 40 times 9.8. Now, as long as this remains frictionless, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter how much it weighs, because we don't need to know the normal force. Uh, but, later on, in the next part, we'll talk about friction, so then it'll be important. So, right now, overall, what we need to do is find the X component. So, this is just this part right here, which is our adjacent part. So, the cosine of 50 times our applied force, which is 90. should give us 57.85 newtons. Now, as far as our free body diagram goes, we want to keep it as simple as possible. So don't have to worry about the angle, just worry about the overall net force that is acting on it in that particular direction. And I said net incorrectly, just the force acting on the x-axis right there. Everything else is canceling out, right? Normal force, force of gravity, that all doesn't matter because it's frictionless, so they cancel out, everyone's happy. Uh, but it's not asking for just the force, we want to know what the acceleration is. So if our net force is 57.85, that should equal our mass, which is 40, sorry about that, someone walked in, uh, times our acceleration. All right, so 57.85 divided by 40 equals our acceleration, which is 1.45 meters per second squared. And it should be in that direction. All right, so let's move on. So this shows kind of what we just did. We have our x and our y here, x over here, y over here. This is the blow the horizontal. Now, I know it's difficult picture this as actually coming down over here. But you have to remember with a free body diagram, forces always come out of the center there instead of going into it. So this one's going into it. So if you can picture it, do, 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 applying, going all the way through, this is what we are looking at right there. All right? Cool. Now let's take that same problem, same uh, lawnmower, only now let's make it a friction full problem, right? So full of friction. So we have kinetic and static friction over here. And we're going to see what happens now that we have to deal with this. So since it's the same problem, 40 kilograms, um, 
90 newtons of force. Only thing that we're adding in here now is friction. I'm going to use some of that information that we had from before. So 57. Good afternoon. Right. So we're going to use some of this information that we had from before. Uh, specifically, our x component over here. Right? So free body diagram, we still have that, what was it, 5788, 5785, 0.85 newtons going that way. Um, only now, we're going to resist some motion over here. All right, that's going to be our force of friction. And in order to find that, we need to figure out our normal force. Because the force of friction equals our coefficient of friction times the normal force. And what we really should do is see if it moves even to begin with. So this is kind of a test run with our static. So that force of friction should equal the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. It's basically the same problem, but if this is greater than our 57.85, it's not going to move. So really, if it doesn't move, there's no point in figuring out what the acceleration or anything else is. We need to see if it's going to be greater than that. So the way we find normal force, is we go back over here, and we already found x component going this way. That was the 57.85. Now we need to figure out our y component, which is going down. This is our negative f that we discussed. Um, and this one is going to be the sine of our angle, which is 50 degrees times 90. That gives us 68.94. All right, but this isn't the normal force. This is just how much we are pushing down, right? So we have gravity. Gravity is acting that right here, and that's that 40 times 9.8. That's 40. Yeah, good. Um, but now we're also pushing down with 68.94. So our force normal is this 40 times negative 9.8 plus 68.94, right? So we have to kind of contradict these. And this is going to be going up, so they'll both be positive, even though these are technically both going down, right? So... So that gives us a huge amount of force that the ground has to push it on. It's not really that big. But uh, a 460.94. Now we're going to take that and multiply it by our coefficient of static friction, which is 0.6, to see if it moves. And remember, if it's greater than this 57.85, it's not going to move. And lo and behold, it is, this is 276.6 newtons, so not going to move. Acceleration equals zero. All right, uh, I'll see you again next time for 4.2.